child has been kidnapped by a witch or have you imagined that the only way for a child in a community to be able to go through formal education is to swim him or her way out through a wavy river. I am a native of the Kompleyu, a community in the Sogla Tonakala district, Northern region. And despite the interesting things of the community, such as great cultural practices, talented zelfonists, great musicians, and great swimmers, the community is also as well being crippled with issues surrounding its education. And one of it is the Kompleyu Dam, which is located within the community and its neighboring communities as well. It then means that during rainy season, it's difficult for any child or any person to cross this wavy river. While growing up, I was always curious, and my best is to make sure that I have formal education. But on a fateful day, something sudden happened. I was being, I mean, I was accompanied my sister to on an errand for my mother. And what happened could shock you. And that is why I ask if you have ever heard or if you could imagine being kidnapped by a witch. So while we were on the errand to get fire for our mother in the neighbor's house, we entered a certain woman's kitchen. And the last time, and the last thing I could remember is a sudden smoke, which I call spiritual smoke, in the way that, in the sense that it filled the whole kitchen space, undetected by anybody within the house. And so my sister returned home. I remained motionless, speechless throughout the day. Even when she was asked, Where is your brother? She has no idea. She was definitely under a spell until the later hours of the day that she remembered and she said yes i think we went together in the morning when you did send me and so my father with haste rushed to the house broke the door and there i was standing the experience i had for that day is amazing though i was a child of three years it's still fresh in my mind the woman could turn herself into different creatures that one can imagine. You can call it snake, you can call it human with half animal. You can see herself grow into a big creature and shrinking. But what was she trying to do after, I mean, after all? First, to scare me. And one thing that is for sure, that humans are made of body and spirit. And when we go back biblically, we could tell that when God formed Adam, he breathed into him. And so, the witch or the wizard cannot attack you or use you for anything unless your spirit is being separated from your body. And so, I remained focused and it appeared there was so much confidence in me that I was never scared. And so, she could not have a way. We went together there throughout the day. And so when my sister remembered and I was rescued, conditions were given that if anything should happen to me within three years, then she would have her son to be blamed. And for the fear of any further attacks, I was sent out of the community to live with an uncle until seven years. After returning to the community, I was enrolled into the basic school. Unfortunately, this community school survived with just one teacher. And out of pressure, he disappeared unannounced on a certain day and students found themselves wandering on campus. And so it was a time to travel or to walk miles in scorching sun to our neighboring community known as Tona. Not the distance was not the problem here, but the problem was what I earlier mentioned, which was the dam. And this dam has its own source of water from 
the southern part of the community from neighboring communities known as Nanfa. And so during rainy season, it's quite difficult to cross. And having been away from the community, I knew nothing about swimming. But this was a barrier for me to decide whether I want to go to school or not. And so I will go to the side or the edge of this dam, watch my colleagues swimming their way to school, but I will basically return home. On an occasion, my sister was going to do laundry by the dam side, and I followed as usual. A childhood friend by name Emmanuel Isa also followed, and out of his playful and jokes manner, he pushed me into the dam. I struggled, and only God can imagine what saved me that day. But suddenly, I realized the importance of that deep. That the fear in me, especially towards water, suddenly disappeared. Emmanuel, who at that point seems to be my worst enemy, started becoming a friend. And he would invite me for practice. And in fact, we didn't only practice how to swim, but in part, how to handle our books whilst we could swim. And we call that the bicycle style. So as you struggle with the waves, you manage to make sure your books are above the water so you can be able to make your way to school. An opportunity came in life, and I happened to be a PhD student at the African University of Science and Technology in Abuja. And having the having desire for swimming, I became the best 100 meter swimmer for the year 2020, I mean 2014. But that is not all. On an event, I will always go by the swimming pool, even if I have no interest to swim. And on one occasion, I spotted a Nigerian who was a PhD student by name Damilola, who happened to know nothing about swimming, but has the desire to do so. And so Dami would just keep himself in the shallow part. Accidentally, he got himself into the deep side by holding the edges and his hands finally slipped off. So I jumped in and rescued Dami. In a second event, a Ghanaian by name Dr. Asari, currently a lecturer at the University of Ghana, was also drowning in that swimming pool. And I went in trying to save Asari, but something happened. And Asari was too strong, and for the fear, he was all over me. At that time, it was a struggle of survival. But I remember one advice from my father, and he always said, never try to save somebody who is stronger than you in water. And at that point, my thought was, okay, so I held on to Asari as well as he did, and I tried to take him deeper to the bottom of the pool. He couldn't stand the breath, and so he left me, and I found myself at the edge, took some breath, and finally he became weaker, and so going for him, it was easier to just hold his hand and then take him out. He has been grateful all this while, asking me many times, how did I save him? I pondered over all these two incidents and I realized the significance of the deed when Emmanuel accidentally pushed me into the water. But like back to the witch case, has the community situation changed? Suddenly not. And when I asked some elders that the youth are scared of the happiness, I got a funny answer that the bird can fly to the sky, but its remains will come to it, will fall to the ground. But the question is, is that the best way to go? Must we continue in this way? And if you look around Ghana, there has been incidents of drowning, especially on the 8th of March, 2021. 12 teenagers were drowned. And any time incidents of this happen, 
it always reminds me of my past. To the African leaders, each time the news brings up, especially on CNN or Al Jazeera, about the Mediterranean Sea, that Africans are drowning each day as they seek for greener pastures. My question is, are they swimming their way to success? And what it is that we are doing that the youth are leaving the continent? And as the saying, a popular Nigerian saying goes, that the toad does not run out in the daytime for nothing. And if it does, then something is after its life. Just like my community not being perfect, like Ghana not being perfect, and like other African countries, it means that there is something we ought to do. And if not, the youth who serve the pillar of our community would one day leave that community to its own judgment. Thank you.